Now atmosphere, the atmosphere is divided in multiple layers. So the layers of atmosphere on the basis of change in temperature that you can see on your screen. Here in the left side of your screen, you can see there are multiple different layers of atmosphere which are unlisted here. The first layer is troposphere that you can see here. Then we have the second layer that is the stratosphere that you can see in the after the troposphere. Third layer we have the mesosphere here. Then the fourth layer we have is the thermosphere that you can see a screen. And this is the ground surface. So when you start moving from the ground surface to the upper direction, you can see about 10 to 12 kilometer height, the troposphere is going to be end. And whenever any particular layer is ending, so that can be called as pause. Pause of what? Pause of troposphere. So this particular layer can be called as tropopause. Then we have a stratosphere. Stratosphere is going around up to 50 kilometer height. And in this particular layer, which is in between stratosphere and mesosphere, that particular line can be called as where stratosphere is ending, stratopause. Then we have the mesosphere and that particular layer where the mesosphere is ending, that can be called as mesopause. So pause are what? Pause are the ending side of that particular layer. And here, altitude kilometer, you can see on the screen. So the very first layer here that you can see where aeroplane is also flying, the clouds are moving, the wind is moving, that particular layer of the immediate boundary of the surface of the earth is called as troposphere. The height of troposphere is ranging between 8 to 16 kilometers. Now, why it is ranging? Why it is not fixed? So, because earth is not also very round in the shape, it is somewhat elliptical in the shape. So, the gravitational force is different at equator and different at poles. So, at poles, the gravitational pull is less, and at the equator, the gravitational pull is very high. So, that's why. The height of the troposphere is also going to be changed according to that. In the equator, the height of the troposphere can be go up to the 16 kilometer. At the poles, this can be reduced to up to 8 kilometer only. So, because thickness of atmosphere is very low there and thickness of atmosphere is very high in the equator zone or in the middle zone of the earth. So, that's why the height of the troposphere is also ranging from 8 to 16 kilometer. It is low at the poles, that is about 8 kilometer, and in the equator it is up to the 16 kilometer height it can go and this is the region where vertical mixing of air is predominant it means the lower layer will go to the upper side and the upper layer will go to the lower side as well so that kind of mixing you can only find out in the troposphere that's why it is called as the layer or the place of vertical mixing and all kind of weather phenomena also takes place only in this troposphere so any kind of weather phenomena that is the rainfall, fog or snowfall, all that kind of weather phenomena only takes place in the troposphere. After troposphere, no weather phenomena takes place. Remember that. And coming to the second layer, second layer here is the stratosphere. Stratosphere height that you can see here. So starting after the troposphere, it means it can start from 8 to 16 kilometer anywhere and it can go up to high as only 12 kilometer and up to high as 50 kilometer as well. So 12 to 50 kilometer height can be of the stratosphere. Now the stratosphere, inversion condition takes place. Now, what is the meaning of inversion condition? Now, here you can see in this particular image, a red line is going and the X axis of this image is depleting the temperature value. So in the ground surface, you can see the temperature is somewhat around 20 degrees Celsius or 18 degrees Celsius. When you start moving upside in the atmosphere, in this specific troposphere, you can see that temperature is decreasing according to this graph. And this decrease in temperature is called as lapse rate in the environment. So why this is decreasing? Because this is very obvious, the surface is absorbing the sunlight or the sun's energy, and it is also increasing the temperature, which is in the contact of that particular surface. And when you start going away from the surface or the earth layer so obviously there would be no surface there to absorb the sunlight so temperature will decrease slowly slowly up to the height of troposphere when you enter in the stratosphere so we know that in the stratosphere there is a formation of ozone layer or the ozone gas you can find out and ozone gas is responsible for absorbing the uv radiation coming from the sunlight and due to this particular phenomena because ozone is absorbing the UV light here, 
of that particular sun. So that's why the temperature is now start increasing here in the stratosphere. First, it will start at constant rate or it is not going to be decreased like in the troposphere. So there would be constant range here. And after, again, if you go up in the stratosphere, the temperature will again start increase, increase, increase up to the stratopause. And the reason behind this is the presence of the ozone layer. This particular phenomena, when you're moving upside in the atmosphere and temperature is increasing, this is called as inversion. So that's why in the stratosphere, it is saying it is inversion condition. And the reason behind this inversion condition is presence of ozone layer, maximum at 25 kilometer height. This question is also asked multiple times in the examination. What is the maximum concentration ozone height you can find out in the atmosphere? So maximum concentration of ozone you can find out at the atmosphere at 25 kilometer height. And this is responsible for stopping the UVC radius. UVC radiation, why? Because UV is also divided in three categories, UVA, UVB, and UVC. So the ozone completely stops the UVC radiation, very majorly also stops the UVB radiation, and it will allow to pass the UVA radiation. The UVC radiation is the most harmful radiation among all the UV radiation. UVA is good kind of UV radiation that is not causing very huge harm to the living animals, you can say. So this UVC radiation is completely blocked by the ozone layer. Now, coming to the mesosphere, after the stratosphere, there would be stratopause. And again, because now in the mesosphere, in the mesosphere, there is no ozone presence. So no ozone presence means, again, the temperature will start decreasing. In this particular graph, again, you can see for the few times, this is going to be constant. And again, the temperature will decrease, decrease, decrease up to the mesopause. And this mesopause is that particular height in which the coldest region of Earth you can find out. The temperature can go up to the minus 90 degrees Celsius in this particular place. So that is mesopause. And because there is no, again, source of absorption of the radiation, so that's why the temperature is decreasing in the mesosphere and mesopause as well. The height of this mesosphere is ranging up to the 50 to 80 kilometer, 50 in the poles, 80 at the equator. Then we have the last layer, that is the thermosphere. Thermosphere height can be, again, very vast. It is starting from the 80 kilometer to 50 kilometer range. It can go high as 400 kilometer height. And again, this thermosphere is also thermosphere is divided in multiple layers, like ionosphere. Why ionosphere? Because ions you can find out here. What kind of ions? Ammonium ions, nitrate ions, ozone ions you can find out here. And again, because there are ions, ions formed there or ionosphere, you can find out ions. So they can again absorb the radiation, sun's radiation, and they will increase the temperature of the thermosphere as well. So again, you can see after the mesopause, the temperature is increasing in this particular red line. And after the ionosphere, we have exosphere, which is outermost layer, you can say, of the orthosphere, that is the, your exosphere. And after that, we have heliosphere, that is the layer that is very falsely interacting with the sunlight. That's why it is called as helio. Helio means related to the sun. So because this particular sphere or layer is very possible I'm interacting with the sun's light. So that is, that's why this is called as heliosphere. So these are the all layers of atmosphere, starting with troposphere and stratosphere, then mesosphere. And then at the last, we have the thermosphere. And all the features of these layers already we have discussed.